Hey, this is Mosquito, also known as Chris. Welcome to the shop. Today I'm using a couple of hollows and rounds, these are number eights, to cut a sample molding profile. And I'm starting out with my shoulder plane here. You can kind of see it's tipped up on its corner. I had a marking gauge line there. I started out with that and you kind of start in that with the very corner of the shoulder plane and then you can kind of rock it down into the cut until you get it flat. And Sometimes you might have to go back with the shoulder plane on its side and clean up that back edge. You kind of saw I adjusted the iron a little bit to the side because it wasn't quite where it needed to be. So it was kind of doing a stair step outward. So that's something to keep in mind when you, or if you, I guess, <laughs> are going to do something like this. But I'm using a shoulder plane just because I didn't really feel like using a fenced version at the time. So this was just a little bit quicker. And here I'm going in and I'm marking the depth for my second rabbit. I had it marked out just for the sake of making sure I had stuff all happy before I started. And obviously I planed that off when I cut that first rabbit. So because it's a little bit easier for me to see, I'm just going to fill that in with pencil and then lay this down flat on the bench because it's a lot easier to cut a rabbit this way <laughs> than trying to cut it on the face. Once again, you can kind of see starting on the very corner of that shoulder plane and I'm using my fingers to kind of pinch the plane as well as a fence. So the way that my left hand is, is kind of basically just holding it so that my fingers run against the workpiece as it's on the shoulder plane to kind of act as a fence so that it helps it to stay on track just a little bit because otherwise you may end up accidentally skating off and obviously that wouldn't be ideal. So once again, you just kind of keep planing until you hit your lines. And then I come back with a block plane. This is just a squirrel tail mini block pane by Stanley. And I do that just to kind of knock off the corner for where those two rabbits meet, because the idea is I'd rather sharpen a straight edge iron in a block plane than the convex iron in my rounding plane. So knocking that off until I get pretty close to my drawing there, layout lines, and next we will come in with the actual round plane. So here I'm starting with basically going at a 45 degree angle to hit both of the two corners from when I just kind of knocked that corner off of the block plane, so now there's two corners. So you start as getting a couple of different shavings, I guess two little narrow shavings, and sooner or later you'll end up starting to take full width single shavings, and that's basically where I'm at here. So then you kind of start rocking the plane down a little bit and then up a little bit, and it gets all figured out happy-wise. Going back to that same exact technique, you can kind of see my fingers acting as a fence a little bit better here and I'm going to be using the rounding plane. So this one actually is a little bit quicker because it only requires a single rabbit and it basically just goes down to the depth. And then I come back again with the block plane and just kind of knock off those two corners. Again, same concept, easier to sharpen, so why not? And then I grab my hollowing plane and go to town. So same thing, you're going to end up starting out with two shavings and eventually those shavings will get wider and wider and once they connect you have a single shaving that is essentially full width and then you do the same thing. You start to rock the plane kind of more vertical and then a little bit more horizontal and eventually you just kind of close in on your profile. It's not uncommon where you may have to kind of do a little bit more at the back or at the start just because it may not always cut evenly and don't feel bad if you do. So this is my test profile. <laughs> Nothing special, but there it is. Thanks for watching.